I'd like to introduce Kelly Slater. 10-time world champion of surf and one of the greatest surfers of all time. He's passionate and committed philanthropist dedicated to preserving the world's oceans with the Kelly Slater Foundation. So you've traveled around the world, you've been in all these different communities. Are there things you've learned from those communities over time that you bring back here and uh, impart to young people? Are there lessons you've learned from that? Well, a lot of good, uh, a lot of good recipes, meals. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I do come in, you know, in contact with so many different cultures. You know, I was in Australia yesterday. There's one place we surf there all the time. Uh, I have an apartment on the Gold Coast in Queensland, and there's a place we surf called Snapper Rock. And, and uh, the community, they decided to do this uh, sand sort of beach replenishing thing. So they're dredging this, this um, inlet and putting the sand on this point. It made this perfect wave that a few years ago, a guy rode a wave for six minutes, one wave, six minutes long. So like two and a half kilometers, or almost three kilometers for one ride. But it's created this mesh of people. People, you know, bought land, built huge high rises. You go down to the beach and you hear, you know, in a matter of 10 yards on the beach, you'll hear someone speaking Japanese, someone speaking Portuguese from Brazil. Um, you run into some guys from Hawaii, guys from the States, tons of Australians. And you got this mix, this, these cultural mixes in these places, sort of these hotbeds where we go. And so for us now, there are, there are great pockets of culture that we go to. Like, and we go to Fiji, where I, I honestly think the nicest people in the world live in Fiji. They're just, they're just always smiling and happy, and they're not connected to, um, they're not connected to the iPhone. You know, they're not connected to, to um, a technology the way we are. And we sort of have... Uh, you know, I find technology has kind of almost split people. Some people have gone, well, I don't, you know, I want to tune out from that and be more in touch with who I am. And some people think I got to be right on the forefront of that and I have to know everything that's happening about technology. And I'm probably somewhere lost in the middle. There's so many things to learn from, you know, from, from traveling, but now we have, uh, you know, what, what has happened in, in the, the history of the world is now we're getting to a place where everything you can, everything there is to know can be found out right now. Any one of you can pick up your phone and find out pretty much anything that almost anyone in the world knows. The world's getting faster and faster, and that's a, that's a common thing that's happening with for all of us is, you know, in early civilization, we're still trying to figure out where people started, you know, were they in Australia or Africa or Europe or Asia, how'd they get to America and South America and et cetera, but they were all so disconnected from each other. Maybe at one point, yeah, we were all connected in one place, but now we're, we're coming to a point now where it's just that, that's, the way, that's the way of the future. It really is like The Matrix, the movie. Whoa. Everyone is tapped into this one thing, and um, you know, the, there's something great about that and something scary about that at the same time, and I think that's what Will brought up before about people being scared of what that brings, you know, what is the future of that, what, what's Big Brother doing looking at us and tracking us and all this kind of stuff and I don't know, it just sort of leads me to a thought that, that the Dalai Lama spoke about earlier and that's having compassion and doing the right thing and if you're doing that it doesn't matter who's watching you, it doesn't matter who's listening in or anything, maybe they'll learn something. So Kelly, for activism, like what is your metric of success when you get involved with an organization? What are you, what are you trying to do? Well, you know, it's, it's always nice to give your time. I mean, that's, if you can be hands-on and be active in something, that's the best way to learn about it. But, but do you, like Trestles versus Surfrider, two different kinds of organizations. One is a specific project you're going to do, it's going to be accomplished. The yeah. other one is a broader idea. So for you, in the broader idea, how do you judge what Yeah, I think we, we sort of talked about that earlier, about um, networking the right people together, you know, and, 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 you know, everyone here knows about that probably as well as I do, or, or better. It's, you know, just when you're forming an idea, when you have a, a vision, whether it's music or it's a company or a, a technology, you, you know, you, you have people thinking about it that are coming up, all, brainstorming all these great ideas, and then it starts to get bigger, and then you need people who can reach out on those different branches and grab the, the right people, and I think that's 
where the su success comes in, you got to have that like mind, but then you have to have different ideas and different viewpoints. And, and um, I guess the measure of success is, you know, the, the end result, whatever comes in the end. And um, for us, we, we don't have any, with my foundation, we don't have any one specific idea in mind. Um, I'm really passionate about a, a lot of health issues, um, about diet, um, um, about getting away from medications. No offense to anyone in the pharmaceutical industry here. But, um, uh, you know, just get, getting, getting um, as healthy as you possibly can is a really important thing to me, and, and um, environmentalism as well. You know, um, just the amount, of, the amount of plastic bags we go through, the amount of plastic bottles we go through. Um, we, you know, most of those are single-use uh, plastics, and where do they go? Does, does anyone know what happens? Has, has anyone in this room ever gone to a recycling plant and watched what happens and how much of that gets recycled? And, and, and does it go, you know, what percentage of recyclables that you put in your, in your, on the side of the street every week goes back into actually being pulled out of the system or reused in the system, or does it just go into the ocean? And so we're finding, you know, there's, there's a gyre out in the middle of the Pacific that's as big as Texas or bigger, and it's just getting bigger and bigger, and it's just filled with these little bits of plastic, and, you know, we're just inundating the ocean with this stuff, and the ocean's much bigger than we can even imagine. It can hold more than we can even imagine, and we're, we're, we're littering literally every square inch of the place, and it's, you know, what's the end game in that? Where, where does that go, and how do we, how do we create a difference like you said earlier, to some kid in Arizona. How does, how does that impact, you know, how could I as a surfer impact somebody who lives inland somewhere? And so we, we had a little talk about that, just trying to, don't use plastic bags when you go to the store, you know, and, and actually make a movement to try to get your, your city to stop plastic bags. That's one simple way a kid could start some kind of movement at school. But, I mean, there's endless movements, though, I mean, you know, we were talking earlier, I, I work with Sea Shepherds, I've worked with Surf Rider Foundation, I've worked with Artistic <coughs> Surfers. The list goes on and on. There's so many things to be passionate about and be in touch with and, and be um, compassionate for in the world. And um, there's no one that's greater than another. They're all really important. They all work together. And, you know, we all do have an effect on each of those things. Will was mentioning something earlier when we were talking outside about um, forecasting technology. And you know he's been working hard trying to figure out what's the next platform, what's the next thing. You know we were talking about how it went from it went from records to tapes to CDs, and then quickly through DVDs they were gone. You know, and now it's just digital files. But it's forecasting what is that next technology, and you know for for artists for you know for these guys making records like their number one thing is to to make a great song, but to also be able to put that out in the right way. You know, so working. Probably these guys working with the right people to create what is that next thing? What's what's five years in the future? What's two years in the future? What's ten years in the future? You know, figuring out where that technology is going to go and how, I guess, for the good of companies, how they own that IP to those technologies as well. So you said you're really passionate about health and also about ocean and environmental issues. So are you a vegetarian or vegan? Well, the, the simple answer is no, I'm not. But but. Uh, the, the more I look into it, the more it makes sense to me. Not only the cruelty to animals that, that happens, but um, you know, also for the health of, of the land and, and for our bodies. And it's a little bit of a, probably a, a taboo subject to really go into in, in um, our typical schools and teach kids that because you know, certain industries pay for certain things and you know, there's certain lunches served at schools and all that sort of thing. But, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of merit to it, to uh, potentially going vegan myself or at least vegetarian. Thank you. Yeah. What's your Thank question? You. What's your name? I'm Elliot, and my question was, what do you think has allowed you guys to make a difference as opposed to, you know, another kid in your school or, you know, some kid in high school? I don't, yeah. <laughs> um, thinking big, you know, I... I come from a, a small city in, in Florida, in central Florida, and um, there's not too many people in my city who've sort of spread out around the world, and I, I live around the world, I travel around the world, and it, it's, it's really great, it's a lot of fun, but I think as a kid, I had a lot of um, ideas that were really big, and both my parents had passions that they never really 
followed. My, both my parents loved to play music. Dad played guitar. My mom loved to sing and play banjo. My dad did a little bit of um, theatrical acting. And, um, but they never really followed their dreams, either one of them, you know. And I think that was one thing my mom always wanted for me. She always wanted me to follow my dreams and, and to think big. Don't, you know, don't just think of, like, you know, just a little problem you have at school or just a little, I mean, you got to take care of those things too. But it's thinking about the, you know, someone like the Dalai Lama, he's thinking about the whole world every time he makes a decision, you know. And, and if people think, if more people think that way, more big, great things happen. What led you guys to your passion, and do you think that in fa um, impacted you greatly to make a change in the world? Mine was by default. My mom liked to sit on the beach and get a suntan. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> That's amazing. There was not much, I didn't have much choice. I, no, I had no I, choice. I had to surf. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I grew up also um, without much money, uh, basically pretty poor. Um, my, my grandfather had money, he spent it all, didn't leave me any, but <laughs> my, um, my parents were really struggling and um, just trying to sort of scrape money together and I didn't really realize it till later, but surfing was kind of like an escape for me. It was something I could do by myself the way I wanted to do it and, you know, it was, it, I just imagined, I used to, I'd, I'd watch waves and imagine how you could ride the wave, the line you could draw on the wave or whatever. And then, you know, I had heroes and I, obviously people influenced me. You know, my, my dad drove me to all my surf contests. My mom, um, you know, she, she always kept me in my place, you know, always kept me grounded. And, you know, she always told me if I ever got a big head, she would, she would beat my ass. <laughs> she would smack me and do whatever. She would threaten me a little bit, but it was all for the right reasons. And, uh, <laughs> Sort of just, you know, kept me on a, on a uh, straight and narrow path, really. But, you know, we all, we all have our heroes and people we look up, up to. In surfing, I had a lot of those people, and, and I was inspired to go travel around the world. I wanted to be able to make money and, and um, travel around the world and surf all these great tropical places. And, um, but at the end of it all, after going all these places for so many years and doing so many things, it, you know, the real inspiration comes from just the pleasure of doing things, just from, from uh, you know, it didn't have to be the best or biggest or most exciting wave or journey or whatever, it's still, it really comes down to sharing with people, you know, having time with, with your friends and your family and the people you love. We should thank our cool. panelists for being here. Thank you guys. Well, what I did was that really anyone who really wants something done can accomplish it with enough work and enough effort. So if you can make an impact with, uh, you know, the people who look to you for an answer or an idea or whatever, then, you know, it's important to do that.